Daddy Fridge. Tell you Daddy Face. <laughs> used to be Baby Face 20 years ago. Landy. Tell you, you're lucky. Right now, eh? I they watch Asake arrive venue in Rolls Royces. But by that time, Oko Wogwamero and Nimero carry all of us, put inside one down for equivalent of a boss. Me, tell you, basket mouth, Paul Play. Yes, and, and Oma Baba carried his load on his head. <laughs> we went mm. to have a show in Manchester. And the people present to watch that show, no reach 15. <laughs> and we came from Nigeria. Ah, these are men of God. You don't touch them. So I'll say something and I expect that I'll sleep and I'll not wake up. And I'll be up the next day and I'm like, okay. Then I'll say a little bit more, expecting that, okay, maybe what I said was not really that bad. Until I actually got to calling them out and nothing happened. Then I realized that, oh, it's just been a mind game all this while. They don't have any power. I remember one church I used to attend. I'm not going to mention the name. Sorry, it wants to rain, so they took lights. That's typical Nigeria. We have not gotten to where you are. <laughs> they will bring it back. <laughs> Anytime you hear breeze blowing, that's not say what well, Nigeria we do. And he was like, yeah, I'm not telling you not to come to church. But when you come to church, you can just use style and start back. This woman, they live with who know be her husband after five husbands. The more I realized that, oh, if you really want to be a Christian, you cannot read just the Bible alone. So all of you carrying English Bible, believing you are reading the word of God, I clap for you. Gucci down to the socks, rings and watch filled with rocks. Translate it to Yoruba. Gucci, titi kan ibose, ago ato rukakpe, lu akpata. Does it carry the same meaning? They told princess, we are not going to come for your event if you use daddy freeze. Princess said, don't come. And they did not come. Even I, I was almost sacked from work. My boss called me one day and said, yes, I like and respect what you have been doing with religion, but we are losing customers. I experienced what you call poverty with a zero. They did not spell my own poverty with O. It was P0. <laughs> In this life, you can be anything. Don't be poor. But that was what I had to do to be able to survive because every form of income had been locked. And I've never told this story before, at least not in a public place. Then something divine happened. There was a time children could not go to school. I was that broke. Sakma Pro Max. <laughs> Every door was locked. Once, I, once they locked the door, I go to the window, they locked the window, they locked everything. It degenerated to ridiculous levels of silliness. The only Nigerian GO that I have conversations with is... Apostle Johnson Suleiman. The only other G.O. is Pastor Sam Adeyemi. And the first poison in Christianity is Jesus. You've mm -hmm. got See to remove game. Jesus. So these people who will not give us visas to their countries, these people who bound and tied up our ancestors, these people who did not see us as brothers and sisters will now come and give us their God. I doubt it. Daddy Fridge. <laughs> My man. Tell you Daddy Face. You used to be Baby Face 20 years ago. <laughs> hey, Landy. Thank you, you're lucky. You know, you know the thing is, the more that I do this thing, this podcast, the more it begins to occur to me just how long I have been in this whole media entertainment space. Because nine times out of ten, I am telling my guests... We go way back. We go way back. But none more so than you and I. <laughs> we we go 
way back. For example, people don't know that that voice on the Teju Baby Face show in the first three seasons that brought them in. Live from Lagos, it's the Teju Baby Face show. They don't know that's your voice. <laughs> We've been through yeah. a lot. We've been through a lot. We've been through a lot. Bus rides in London going to Manchester to do the very first Nigerian comedy show. As in, right now, eh? And they watch Ashake arrive venue in Rolls Royces. But by that time, Oko Wameron Nimero carry all of us, put inside one down for equivalent of a boss. Me, Teju, Basket Mouth, Paul Play. Who else was with us on that KP. bus? KP. KP, Omo Baba. Ah, Omo Baba. Omo Baba. <laughs> no, no. You remember that time when they went on that trip back from Manchester? They dropped us in uh, London in the middle of the night. Yes, and, and then... Omo Baba carried his load on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Omo Baba carried his load on his you, head. You, you see, eh? Um, what we did... Is this your interview, so let me just hand it over to you. But let me just say this thing. What we did for the industry, yeah. they can never understand. And they will never give us credit for it. We went mm. to have a show in Manchester... And the people present to watch that show know it's 15. <laughs> and we came from Nigeria. <laughs> no, no, look, please go ahead. I, my thing on my podcast, I, I allow my people to talk, man. You know, it, it, it's amazing to me that you're, so you're the only person, and I'm not just putting you on now. Maybe I'll leave space for one or two other people whose names I can't think of. I'll just leave that space. But, you're about the only person whose power of recall is equal to mine. You're the only person whom I say, do you remember? And you actually do remember. Most people don't. Your power of recall is almost exactly like mine. You do remember stuff. Oh, I remember. I remember. And you don't want me to remember. There was a time <laughs> we all got upgraded on Virgin Nigeria and Teju Babyface wasn't upgraded to business class and Teju Babyface gave them a piece of his mind. <laughs> oh, no, I was... No, I was annoyed. I was no. No, no, I was and you didn't let me hear the last of it. Oh, I didn't. You know, I didn't. So you would you would come back from business class to economy and say, hey, ah, you should be here. <laughs> It was because of me. <laughs> no, I was okay. So 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 here's the thing now. Uh do you do you actually remember the last time that we saw? Speaking of your power of recall, if you remember the last time that we saw face to face in person. I'll find something dash you. I'll give you something. No, There's let me no try. Food. It was yeah. somewhere in Ikeja. It was at an event. I don't remember what event it was, but you were driving that your Lexus for the first time that I saw. You had one Lexus. Saluta. Yeah, the LS600. Yes. Yeah. That, I think, was the last time we saw saw one on one if i remember clearly but remind me if there was any other instance no, after that that's wrong that was maybe the penultimate time we saw the last time we saw i tell you was one beautiful sunday morning we were on the stage on the altar of house on the rock they were doing some celebrity entertainment industry sunday thing and no, at the I end think of we, the I service, saw after that nah, nah, i'm nah. almost certain at the end of the, at the, <clears throat> end of the service the pastor now called all of us on stage right if people gave speeches and so as we're leaving that's when i noticed that you were there on stage so as we're leaving stage i'm asking you ah dio is this your church ni? you say yeah yeah that you that this is the church that you come now now i i bring that up because as I seem to remember, that was that was, I know that was 2013. But as I seem to remember, your new this new person that you became, this reinvention that took you over and that you took over started, if my memory is correct, in 2014 or 15. Please tell me if I'm wrong. It was about that. Um actively 2016. Yeah. When I started, it, it had always been in me, I'd always questioned the narrative i'd always wondered why things weren't adding up but actively i think i started in 2015 
but I became more visible about it in 2016 and my interview on Linda Ikeji over tithing was what brought me to the religious limelight, if I can call that a thing, in 2017. So the whole world knew that there was a guy, Daddy Freeze, challenging the status quo of the religious establishment and that didn't happen until 2017. But before then, I had been, I had started being vocal, I had started challenging, you know, with a lot of fear. Ah, these are men of God, you don't touch them. So I'll say something and I expect that I'll sleep and I'll not wake up and I'll be up the next day and I'm like, okay. Then I'll say a little bit more, expecting that, okay, maybe what I said was not really that bad. Until I actually got to calling them out and nothing happened. Then I realized that, oh, it's just been a mind game all this while. They don't have any power. There's no... There's no spirituality to this. It's just, it, it, it's, it's, it's just if you allow me a religious form of a confraternity where you do anything, they'll come and hit you. And literally, that's what they did. They did that to my finances. They, you, you know, but let me allow you to, um, because I know you have a lot of questions lined up. So let me allow you get there by yourself. No, well, again, please, my job is to listen. Uh, feel free, please don't ever feel till you need to stop at any point in time right but i will i will now ask you so here's the thing so again you know this right now i don't always agree with your tactics yeah and the the expression of that was when about then it must have been 2017 i miss well i will perhaps eternally regret this right perhaps eternally i unfollowed you on instagram Right. There was a brief moment where, you know, um, I, I didn't agree with the tactics. And in some emotional, I can't remember what happened, I unfollowed you. And then you, you noticed, now here was the thing, before you noticed, I had come around again. I'd gotten out of whatever funk I was in. And so I, I, I forgot, I forgot that I had unfollowed you. So you now called me out shortly after that, eh? You unfollowed me. Okay. And then before I replied to you, I went to follow you back. And then I now reply, I said, ah, I'm following you now. To which he said, ah, it's a lie. You're running, you just, you just did it again, right? Now, so I apologize for that then, and I apologize again for, for doing that, right? But agree with your tactics or not. What I can tell you for free is that whatever respect I have or had for you has more than tripled. You're easily one of the people that I respect most in the world. I may not always agree. <laughs> With what you're with what you're doing but my respect for you to have a belief to have a mindset to have a stance to have a conviction and to stand on that thing in the face of attacks detractors real enemies most of us think people are attacking us but we have not faced the level of attack that you must have faced and to stand strong whether whether you were wrong whether you were right you believed in what you were saying and you stood fight you will always have my eternal respect so the question here is people on, only get to that point when they've been tempered by the fires of adversity and life when you see a person who's ready to die on something they have usually seen something or been through something people just don't arrive in that place okay how did you get to this mindset this steel that you have in your spine you know, um, it all happened with, you know, Ted Jue, I also respect you a lot. One of the reasons why I don't do interviews is there's no way I don't get to talk about things I don't want to talk about, you know. And I told you, I said, that list of people that have asked me to interviews, I still got a, a call from Arise TV on Friday. I am not doing it because... You are not giving me an interview to help my brand. You are not my friend. You see, I do interviews with two sets of people. Those who profit me and those who I, had a, I have a journey with. For instance, I will not call you Teju. I will call you Teju Oyelaki. There are very few people I know to the point where I've been to your house before. You understand? So there are very few people who I will grant that audience because there's no way I'll sit down and have an interview and 
personal life matters will not arise. So I'm going to tell you this here. I'd always felt funny about the church. And the closer I got to the pulpit, the more I worried. I remember one church I used to attend. I'm not going to mention the name. Sorry, it wants to rain, so they took light. That's typical Nigeria. We have not gotten to where you are. <laughs> they will bring it back. <laughs> Anytime you hear breeze blowing, just know they were in a Nigeria with me. I was in a five-star hotel doing my life when the light went. Now, Niger, now, Niger, they say, ah, eh, all condolence to Gaza and the people there. They say, ah, they, they bombed there. I go to Kukumaiko the other day. Gaza and Kukumaiko, I don't see the difference. So it's just that nobody is bombing us. <laughs> so, anyway, the closer I got to the pulpit, the more I realized that things were wrong. So I remember attending this church service. I used to have this uh, event every year. And it was the norm for the president at that time to give a speech around midnight. And in the meeting, uh, someone, we're now drawing, you know how we do events now, 805, 811, uh, you're going to, going to come and introduce for two minutes, then Basketball is going to have a 15 minute session, then uh, Idris Abdul Karim is going to come and sing for 30 minutes, you understand. So they played the whole um, agenda, what is, what, what is it called, uh, itinerary, till midnight. Then at midnight, somebody now suggests, ah, the president's speech. And I remember the pastor saying, no, 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 not this year. This is election year. Uh, in an APC state, you really, no, 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 no. And I was like, oh my God. So God recognizes election year. To me, that was a bit of a worry. I was like, okay. You know? And it was that was one of many things that made me start questioning that, okay, I, I thought these people were demigods. I thought these people could literally fly. I thought if there was an accident, they would just come out and they would fly, or God would put his hand inside the egg and bring them out. But, but I started seeing more human um, attributes to these people. And then in 2014, my marriage had always been troubled. I, I, I don't want to bring you into this and I don't want to talk about it, but you know, you are close enough yeah. to me to know that I was going through from as early as me and you take no. You don't know, say something no right in this guy's marriage. Yep. And in 2014, it came to a head. And I remember I used to do events in my church. Church literally used to pay me then to do events, which I celebrate. At least the pastor was not eating all the money, was at least sharing to the people who were working. And... I was supposed to, I was called, booked for an event that I used to do for the church. And I was called at no, that I should cancel it because, you know, of my marriage, my divorce or pending divorce drama. And I'm like, because I'm going through a divorce, does that remove God in me and put God inside one corner? So, so, so I was like, you know, I, I questioned that too. And then... Um, I was supposed to, then, then the pastor came to my house back then. I sat down in his Mercedes and we had a conversation and he was like, yeah, I'm not telling you not to come to church, but when you come to church, you can just use style and start back. He didn't say it in those exact words, but just implied it so that there would not be a confrontation in church. And it started looking a little bit funny and I was like, what's all this? So that made me sit at home. Instead of me to go to church and hide. Is it not better that I sit at home? So sitting at home on Sunday. Now started feeding the wolves in my brain. Those ravenous wolves that had been asking questions from when I was a kid. And my parents would tell me you cannot question it. You don't know more than God. Is this, this, that, 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 that. So I, I'm, I'm stuck at home. I'm watching TBN, I'm reading my scriptures, and I'm seeing things that are not adding up. I, I remember John chapter 4, uh, the woman who had had five husbands, 
and was living with a man that was not her husband. And Christ used that woman to win a whole Samaritan town. And I said, I said, this is my first divorce. This woman has been through five marriages. At least this one is my first marriage. When I don't already carry me, go put for one corner. This woman, they live with who no be her husband after five husbands. And a lot of people like to interpret uh, all her other husbands must have died. Who told you? It was very easy to get divorced in biblical times. Just read Deuteronomy chapter 24, 1, 2, 3. All a man needs to do to divorce you is just write a bill of divorce and give it to you. And as you leave his house, you can go and marry the next house, the next man. It's as easy as that, according to the Deuteronomical system that was in place even while Christ was with us. So, it was that little bit of, come, this is not what's happening here. This Bible doesn't sound like what we are practicing. So, one question, getting an answer, now leads to more questions. And I kept asking more and more questions. And that led me to read the Bible from cover to cover. And I still didn't get the answers. So seeking, okay, why is this like this? I started studying history. I'd always been a good student of history. But then I intensified in my study of history, study of religion, study of uh, how did the Catholic Church come to being, how did uh, Pentecostalism come to being, how did... And the more I found things out, the more I realized that, oh, if you really want to be a Christian, you cannot read just the Bible alone. There are books that were never included in the Bible. There are books that were removed. Somebody said, Daddy Freeze. The Bible is a complete word of God. And I said, which Bible? Is it the Ethiopian Bible that has 80-something books? Or the Pentecostal Protestant Bible that has 66 books? Or the King James Bible that has 70-something books? If the King James at 70 something is the original Bible that is the Word of God, then that means the Catholic Bible added, the Ethiopian Bible added, and I, I don't know if, if I'm communicating with you. So if we say it is the Pentecostal Bible that is the real Bible, how come the Ethiopian Bible has 18 extra books? So which one did they add and which one did they subtract? More revelations started coming. Then that led me to start studying scripture in original languages. Because let's remember, the Bible was never written in English until 400 years ago. So all of you carrying English Bible, believing you are reading the word of God, I clap for you. And, and I still use this in a sermon <laughs> last weekend. I used a line from Notorious B.I.G. Gucci down to the socks, rings and watch filled with rocks. Translated to Yoruba. Gucci, Titi Koi Bosse. Ago at Orukakbe, Luakpata. Does it carry the same meaning? <laughs> Does it carry the intended meaning of the linguistical expression that Notorious B.I.G. was trying to convey in that verse? Just by translating to Yoruba, modern English to modern Yoruba. Now imagine coin ancient Greek to Middle New English. Of course, how the essence is lost just by translating alone. So I went to study the New Testament in Greek, the original language it was written, under the tutelage of Greek scholars. When I finished with Greek, the next language the scriptures went to was Latin. I started looking for Latin scholars. We started going through Small by small, let me understand what the, what, was, what the Latin Bible was trying to portray, what Constantine was trying to get to when he uh, assigned Jerome to, to translate the Vulgate. Then you now realize that there's even a Hebrew Bible. And then there's a Greek Septuagint or LXX that even predates the Latin Bible. Then you now realize that you have a whole volume of material. Now, 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 let me even break it down to you. That's just the beginning of it. The oldest Septuagint is not one scroll. It's different scrolls. Many of them have different little, little portions of differences here and there. That's why you see the King James Bible, for instance, has Matthew 23, verse 14. But the NIV and NLT removed that verse. Why? Because the, the scroll that was used to translate the KJV is not as accurate 
as the scrolls used to translate the newer Bibles because people now had the Dead Sea Scrolls. They had more and more access to information. So when I started having this, I started questioning the very core of our belief system. Now, let's not even get to the point where it's not adding up. Because I cannot, you cannot have a Jew climb his pulpit and tell you that the dollar, leave what IMF is saying, that he's declaring that the dollar will rise, the Naira will rise against the dollar in 2016. Seven years later, at that time when he said the dollar was about 200 or something Naira, today, sorry, yesterday, I changed dollar for 1,300 Nigerian Naira. So, the prophecies are not even adding up. This declaration that they do with such boldness, apart from the fact that it is not just false, but ridiculous and baseless, they don't even understand this book that they are supposed to be the custodians of. And once you start reading Bible in other languages, you will now start seeing the errors that the church now stood up and stamped and said, you know what, this is how it's going to be. But this thing is wrong. Well, we have said it is that is right. We have agreed. What is bound in, on earth is bound in heaven. Dude, that was not how Christ used that expression. Mm. And that is how the term Lucifer came to my uh, bio. Oh, that brought a lot of controversy. And a lot of people say that the freeze is following the devil, that the freeze is following Lucifer. If only you took your time out to read the Latin Bible like I did. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, if rendered in Latin, you will see Peter calling Christ Lucifer. Don't take my word for it. Just The Latin Bible is even online. You see, we are so lucky these days. Everything is online. You don't have to have a copy of the Vulgate like I do. I have a Bible that has English, Greek, Latin. Cyber. So as you are reading it in Greek, you are reading it in Latin, you are reading it in English. You don't even need that. That is advanced. Just go online and type 2 Peter 1 verse 19. Copy. You will see Lucifer there. Copy it and put it inside Latin English translator and see what it renders. Then read the translation in English and see whether it's not the same thing. But the problem is they were not ready to accept new information because it went against age-old beliefs and uh, uh, stereotypes and prejudices that they cannot do away with. So that was when I now started getting bold. But you see, even my boldness, huh, I still felt that I was going to be poor. I still felt that I was going to lose my life. I still felt I was going to go through so much. And yes, I did go through so much, but it had nothing to do with spirituality. Because they literally called their daddy geos who called their boys in all the agencies and say, boy, cut him. And the peak of that was when I was paid to MC an event. And they called and the, the guy advertised the event that MC Daddy Freeze. Or Freeze of Cool FM as it was that time. And they started calling him that if this guy is your MC, I'm not attending your event. And this guy don't pay deposit. Me, I don't spend the deposit. I they look forward to say balance will come. You understand? We go use them because jobs were not coming. And the guy called me up and says, you know what? I'm not going to ask, ask you to refund the deposit, but this is the problem I'm facing. So just keep the money. I was heartbroken. It didn't happen once. It happened several times. People will literally call and say, as long as he's coming, we are not coming to your event. One lady was bold enough. Shout out to her. I love her with, 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 with everything. Big shout out to her. She has a, a fashion school. Uh, Gimite. She might fashion academy. She used to have. I used to MC her event every did year. Say, did you say Jim Ike? No, Jim G Mike. Okay, Jim Mike. Yes, G Mike Fashion Academy. Her name is Princess Ogene. Princess was the boldest person I've ever met, or is. They told Princess, "We are not going to come for your event if you use Daddy Freeze." Princess said, "Don't come," and they did not come. That year, the last, that's the last year. I, after that, I know even just bother around because I don't want to carry my wallet for spoil her own events. I was literally standing on stage and the hall was about 30% capacity and it was not COVID. People were literally, uh, what do they call that distance that they told us to do in, in COVID? 
social distancing. Social distancing. I stand for 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 stage like this. See social distancing. <laughs> so so. To be honest, even I, I was almost sacked from work. My boss called me one day and said, yes, I like and respect what you have been doing with religion, but we are losing customers. You have tried, you have made a mark. Stop. And that day, I went to God. I'm like, God, now you send me on this message. The only place where I'm eating, because I now became a civil servant. Cool. When I was... When I was 25 years old, I was not relying on Cool FM. All of a sudden, I'm 40-something. I'm relying on radio salary that was less than 200,000, about 200 and something thousand naira a month to feed my family. I experienced what you call poverty with a zero. They did not spell my own poverty with O. It was P0. <laughs> V-E-R-T-Y. <laughs> As in zero. But bro, you don't, you don't, you, you don't understand. I came home and poverty is very bad, though. Ah, in this life, you can be anything. Don't be poor. Baba, poor man, good day. You go to get concept. One day, I just came home and I said the children are watching too much television. That television is not good. That they should be watching thirty minutes of television in a week. And I backed it up with research just so that I can cut light. Expenses. <laughs> oh boy. Baba, children, they watch 30 minutes. I mean, religious. I'm a bearing in nine by 9 30. I don't come with remotes. Oh, yeah. You should not watch more than 30 minutes. Meanwhile, now they have television in their rooms, they have games in their rooms. I cannot even, I'm sure they must have looked at me like the devil then. But that was what I had to do. To be able to survive because every form of income had been locked. So that last one that was left for me, where they used the job, they now threatened it. They had a meeting of the board and the board said, as long as Daddy Freeze continues this thing, we are in trouble, he must stop. So I was going home that day. There was nothing else I was doing though. That time I'd not started on YouTube, I'd not started, I'd not, I was still just radio and I was fighting on Instagram. And I was preaching on Instagram and then Instagram preaching is that 24 hours. You, do, you load it to your story and then in 24 hours they will delete it. So I'll have to preach the message again three days later. And, that, and, and, I, and I looked at it, I was like, can I really survive on this? And I've never told this story before at least not in a public place, then something divine happened. My MD now went to see some contract, some, uh, I think it was a governor in the north or some top contractor who he was looking for a job from. And the guy was watching my video. 